We've covered a bunch of videos already on terrestrialization in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, but in today's video, we're going to focus specifically on how best to use this new mechanic in these brand new games. The debate comes down to do we use it more offensively or defensively? Before we answer this, let's break it all down. In its simplest form, Pokemon is a numbers game. You take more knockouts than your opponent and you win. We all know this, but if you pick up a knockout first, it limits the options your opponent has. So let's look at a couple of examples hypothetically about how terrestrializing in these new games could work firstly from an aggressive hyper offensive mode we've got a high dragon on one side of the field and a giraffe rig on the other side high dragon knows that it needs to remove the giraffe rig to prevent the trick rooms being set up by the opposing player now hypothetically speaking the giraffe rig is holding the Eviolite. its defenses are sky high so you're going to need to hit it with a strong super effective attack it makes sense in a hyper aggressive situation here for the high dragon to go for its dark terror transformation get an additional star boost same type attack bonus on top of its already dark boosted attacks and then launch a terror blast attack into a dark type to remove it from the field and with this hypothetical double stat boost in this situation, this situation is great from an aggressive point of view, hyper offensive point of view, you're able to prevent your opponent getting any momentum. But on the flip side of that, in this same situation where the high dragon on player A's side does go for that pure dark terror transformation and getting that extra boost, Whereas this time around, the Giraffarig player also terrestrializes in a defensive play to go into a pure fairy type Pokemon. This is going to be able to take the incoming big attack from the Hydreigon, doesn't matter how boosted it is, it's not going to be very effective, allowing that player to get the Trick Room up. Now you might think in this situation, it isn't as worthwhile going for the terrestrialization because you're not getting the damage output from it like you would be if you were the High Dragon player. But another perspective on this could be that this team is specifically dedicated to Trick Room and if that Trick Room does go up, it allows something like Torkoal to come in or another big aggressive Trick Room attacking Pokemon, even without its terrestrialization, to hit the field and do enough damage to overwhelm the opponent in the position where they can't manage the trick room turns well enough and this although you're not getting the damage output with your terrestrialization it is a key feature in being able to execute a game plan from a defensive point of view rather than an offensive point of view these examples are completely hypothetical and just examples of how certain approaches either offensively minded or defensively could create different leverage situations in a battle then this leads us back to the original question, how should we be using terrestrialization in battle? Defensively or offensively? I'm going to give you a quick answer and my opinion on this. I don't think you should be so blinkered or blinded by going down one route or another with terrestrialization when it does come into effect with these new games. I think you've got to take every single aspect of this multi-layered new mechanic and utilize it to the best of your ability. Don't look at it just in one way. Doing so will definitely limit your ability to capitalize with this new gimmick. Sometimes there will be situations where a hyper aggressive offensive strategy feels and does come off to be the best thing going forward in a match, but there are gonna be other situations where you're pinned into a corner, you've got a bad board position, and the best player in those positions is gonna be taking advantage of terrestrializing as a defensive tool as well, which you can then utilize to build the momentum, get yourself in a better position, and then take the match forward from there. I personally feel that this new mechanic will be more about choice and specifically the timing of it rather than just blindly going all in on one angle. These of course are just my thoughts and I would love to hear your thoughts on this new mechanic as well and how best you see it being used in these new titles. And if you enjoyed this video make sure to check out this video right here that goes into a bunch more detail about how terrestrializing will not only affect gameplay in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet but it will change the whole dynamic of team building as well in the new generation of battling for Pokemon going forward. So make sure you check that out. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.